So you went to use the bandsaw and it wouldn't cut straight. And you said, what's that all about? Well, we're going to show you simply. We're going to take you back there and we're going to show you what the problems could be and what the fix is. But let me give you a little drawing up front so you get a better idea. And by the way, the application for a bandsaw, whether it's vertical or horizontal, is, is the same. That's the setting of the guides, tension of the blade, etc. But I think what's what's oftentimes missing is that the uh, the horizontal bandsaw is much more complicated to feel the pressure that you're putting on the part that you're cutting. Because usually it's it's on an articulating arm which goes this way. Sometimes it goes horizontal, but sometimes it doesn't. And there are always adjustments on there for the feed rate. So I'm assuming that and we're not really addressing any of that. We're not going to address the number of the teeth per blade, the type of blade you should be using for the type of material, the feet per minute, as I said, the, uh, the amount of pressure. That's all something different. We're not addressing that. What, we're going to, what we are going to address is we're going to address the fundamentals of the, of the blade, of the bandsaw itself, and how to set the blade properly. So there are guides on, uh, on either saw, whether it's horizontal or vertical, and those, the tension and the blades need to be set properly. So generally they have bearings on them, not always. Some of them just have metal guides come down on an angle. But let me give you an idea what it looks like. So if we have a bandsaw blade that comes down like so, and here's the table, and the wheel's up here, and another one down here. This is again in a vertical saw. What we're gonna focus on is the area right in here and right down in here. And that area is where the adjustments are to make sure that the blade is supported properly. And when it's supported properly, guess what it's going to do? It's going to cut straight. And if you don't support it, it's not going to cut straight. Chances are. That's really critical in a horizontal saw, i got to tell you that, particularly cutting steel. So let's talk about this area right here. That area right there always has a series of bearings there and another one on the back side and that happens to be uh, well let's show it like that that happens to be a round bearing so and the blade rests on that so this has a cam on it and it is adjustable either way and so does that one and so does this one in the back it adjusts from front to back so let's turn this sideways so now we've got a bearing here and another one here down below. But we also have a bearing back here. Remember I mentioned this bearing? This is where the blade comes down. And the blade actually rests against this back one. Is that clear or is that kind of muddy? No, that's... Is that clear, Glenn? So... You want to make sure that this rear bearing is just touching the back of the saw blade. And the bearings here do not want to ride like that. They want to ride, if this is the teeth, the bearing, this bearing right here does not want to touch the teeth. Why? Because if it does touch the teeth, it's going to dull the teeth. Don't want to do that then you're going to be replacing the band blade, the bandsaw blade rather. So we've got to make sure that this is adjusted in and out properly, that this is set properly, and that the whole thing is from beginning to end, we go through the right sequence. And we're going to go out there in the back, we're going to show you what that sequence is. So we understand that when all of this is set right, two things are going to happen. It's going to cut straight, more importantly, it's going to give you less grief and aggravation, and it's going to be fun. So it can be fun. It doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, you know, every time I walk up to something, at least when I was in a shop a lot, I'd go to use something and 95% and of the time I'm in a rush, 
to get the job done. So I'm not paying any attention to this. Somebody's got to maintain the equipment. And, and I'll bet you when we go back there, we're going to find out that this piece of equipment is out of adjustment. Why? Because nobody in the department said, let's make sure this saw is set properly. And that's just the way it is. Uh, so let's go back there and take a look at it and see if we can find out A, what the problems were, and B, if we can set it the right way. So when we cut, we're going to get a good straight cut and it'll be fun. I'm not going to fight it. Well, particularly again with steel, because with steel, if these guides are not set right, believe me when I tell you, you're going to be cutting on cockeyed or on an angle. You're going to blame the blade. You're going to say, oh, we need a new saw blade. Maybe, maybe. But maybe you don't need a new saw blade. Maybe you need to set it right in the first place. And again, if it's set right, the blade will last longer. Remember, we don't want the bearings riding on the teeth. And it's not going to break or not as apt to break if everything is set right. So the manufacturer put it there for a reason. And the reason is that it's intended to support the blade in a straight and vertical position. So it's the bottom one isn't like this, the top one's not like that, so we don't put a kink in the blade. It's not this way, so it doesn't go off and on. It has to be set right, and that's a feel. You know, when I was talking about the art form, that's a little bit of the art form. You just touch it with your fingers and you feel it so it's just right. And then when you get it that way, it's fun and it works. Let's head on back and check it out. So as we said, we're gonna demystify the bandsaw. It's really pretty simple. What happens so often in the shop is that the bandsaw gets used by Fred, by Joe, by George, by Tom. Nobody takes the time and the trouble to, to look at the bandsaw and see if it's adjusted properly. So I just took a look at this bandsaw and the same thing has happened here. So it's not just your shop. We have the same problem as well. Sometimes people just don't look and say, well, I wonder what's wrong with this, if anything's okay. Everybody's in a rush to go ahead and do their job, which is good, but nobody takes the time to check the machine out. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust the blade. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to spin, we're gonna assume that the blade's already been installed and it's already been set for the proper tension. And the tension, we'll show you where that's at in the back in a little bit. There's two things. One is tension this way, the other one is the wheel this way. Why? Because if the wheel is caught, remember you've got two wheels like this. If the wheel's caught too much this way, the bandsaw blade's gonna walk in. If it's caught this way, the bandsaw blade will walk off. So this has already been preset. I unplugged the machine for safety purposes. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spin the wheel by hand to set the, so the blade will settle down. So just give it a couple of turns. All right, now I'm convinced that the blade is settled on the, on the wheels. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the, the rollers so we're gonna get the play out right to left and front to back. One more important thing. There's an adjustment here that obviously people don't pay any attention to. If I put this too far forward, the rollers on here do what? They actually ride on the edge of the blade and then it dulls the tips of the blade because they're running on the bearings on these rollers. So we don't want that to happen. So we need to make sure that that's set up properly. So it looks like it ought to be right about there. So that's the first adjustment. So remember, the tip of this roller does not touch the sharp edge of the blade. And we'll snug that down. Next, I'm gonna adjust the back roller. That's the one that takes the pressure when you're cutting, when you're pushing on it. Something's gotta prevent the blade from falling off. So they put a bearing back here. It's a pretty smart idea. So we're gonna move him gently in and out till he touches. And remember, we've got the same identical setup right here down below. It's absolutely identical. So now that I've got that set and I'm comfortable with it, the next thing I'm gonna do is to set the rollers on the side. This is on a little cam.
and we, we don't want this to push on it. We just want it to touch it. See, if I push on it, look what it does. It bends the blade. Don't want to do that. We just want it to touch it. There we go. I can feel it's touching. Snug it up. Do the same thing here. Snug it up. All right, now I'm convinced that we've got this set right. Remember, we've got the blade set. Set the whole assembly so it does not ride on the teeth of the blade. We've done that first. Then we set the backstop second. Now we set the cams right and left. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom edge. But we don't need to. We don't need to record that right now. But that's all there is to the fundamentals of the bandsaw. Again, tension set right, right here. Scales in the back. We know about that. Another knob here to tip the wheel this way. We've done that. How simple is that? Nothing to it. Thanks for watching.